Welcome to Team to Team, presented by Cigna, proud partner of the Arizona Cardinals. I'm Kyle Odegaard. I'm joined today by David Hellman, staff writer for DallasCowboys.com. David, let's get right into it. Dak Prescott injury is obviously the, the big news for the Cowboys. How is that affecting the team this week, and how do you think they cope with that moving forward? Well, I mean, from a purely football standpoint, you got to applaud the front office for signing Andy Dalton. You know, that was obviously a big offseason storyline was getting him on a one year, $3 million deal. So, you know, this isn't obviously this isn't the first time the Cowboys have dealt with quarterback injuries. Dak got his start because of Tony Romo. So at, at the very least, you know, good on them for being prepared for it. You kind of feel like maybe the season's not lost because Dalton is such a capable backup. Um, but then you look at the emotional standpoint, you know, I mean, it, it's about as devastating an injury as I can remember. Obviously, uh, Dak is Dak is probably the most beloved Cowboy player by his teammates that I've ever covered. And you can see that that that, you know, really took a toll on them on Sunday. Uh, a lot of emotion when he was taken off the field and uh, you know, I don't expect Cardinals fans to notice that, but you know, the Cowboys players actually put together a, a montage of get well videos and there's just been a, a crazy outpouring of support. So like I said, on, on the field, I think, you know, it's about as good as you could hope for when you lose your starting quarterback. But I do wonder how that lingering emotion is going to carry over. Yeah, it seemed like there was an outpouring of support even nationally for Dak, who seems like one of the, the good guys in the NFL. If you look at it philosophically on offense now, do you think the, the Cowboys have to change much? Obviously, Andy Dalton isn't as mobile, but it seems like he certainly got the arm to get the ball to those receivers. Yeah, I mean, tweak, yes. Overhaul, not really. Uh, you know, Andy Dalton doesn't have any business running read options or quarterback draws. Uh, Dak, Dak has always been a guy that loves to do bootleg stuff. Um, so maybe we see less of that. But I, you know, I've heard a lot of pundits across the country talk about, well, you got to lean on Ezekiel Elliott and, and kind of just get it done with the running game. I'm not 100% sure I agree because the Cowboys offensive line is compromised by injuries as well. Uh, their two starting offensive tackles are out for the season. And I worry that if you put Andy Dalton in obvious passing situations by running the ball too much, you expose him to getting terrorized by opposing pass rushes. So. I hope Kellen Moore doesn't change his philosophy too much. I think, you know, Andy Dalton's a three-time Pro Bowler. He should be good enough to function without training wheels, basically. So, um, you know, and Zeke's going to have a role to play, but I just, I don't think you can completely abandon the philosophy they were using because uh, I, think, I think Dalton's good enough to keep it up. You mentioned the offensive line, obviously a group that for a long time was known as the best in the NFL, and this year it's had some injuries. On the flip side, the Cardinals just lost a, a, a key player in Chandler Jones, a, an elite sack artist. How do you see that matchup going where the Cardinals pass rush lost some guys, the Cowboys offensive line has lost some guys? Is that important? And it, it seems like it's almost a matchup of reserves against reserves. So Tyron Smith, has, he, he's on injured reserve. He only played in two of the five games. Lyle Collins didn't have a season at all. And the Cowboys have been able to piece it together with these undrafted rookies and, and journeymen, albeit they piece it together against, let's say what it is, mediocre pass rushes. You know, like they, they held up against Seattle. They held up fairly well against the New York Giants. But when Miles Garrett came into AT&T Stadium, he got two sacks and a strip sack that gave Cleveland an extra possession and completely changed the nature of that game. So. You know, obviously nobody roots for injuries. I'm, 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 you know, it's devastating that Chandler Jones is done for the year, but you talk about a guy of his caliber going against these tackles, I think it's a much different story. So, uh, you know, it, it definitely gives you the, the optimism that, that this line can hold up without, without a bona fide star going against them, maybe. Switching gears to the Cardinals offense, Kyler Murray is a guy that people in Dallas know very well. He, he played his high school career there. It was unbelievably successful. Do you have any memories of Kyler Murray back from high school? And then looking forward at this game, how much of a problem is he for the Cowboys? Yeah, oh, well, <laughs> I mean, the guy's obviously a problem. Uh, yeah, it's, it's funny. Um, Kyler Murray, I'm not kidding. I mean, how old is he? Like 23, 22? Like, he is already a legend in the DFW area. I remember, you know, I started working here in 2013. 
And in 2013 or 2014, everybody, every sports fan in the Metroplex already knew who he was. Like people would go to his games. People who weren't invested in Allen High School would go to see him play. And I remember, I guess maybe I'm a bit of a skeptic because I remember not, not trying to hate on him, but I was like, okay, he's a great high school player. Let's see what happens when he goes to college. Well, he won the Heisman Trophy for Oklahoma. And then it's like, all right, well, can he deliver on the hype in the pros? Oh yeah, he's Offensive Rookie of the Year, and he's you know he's already having an amazing sophomore season. So, I I I I feel crazy saying this, but I actually the other day I compared him to LeBron James in the sense that I don't know if he's going to be the best to ever play, but he has had so much hype on his shoulders since he was about 14 years old, and to this point in the process, he has delivered on every bit of it, and I just think. That is so impressive to be a household name as a high school sophomore, and now you're an NFL sophomore and you're still delivering on the hype. So uh, what, he's got 296 rushing yards this season. This Cowboys front seven has been very bad at making plays in space. Uh, I think his mobility is gonna be a big problem for this Dallas defense. Wanted to wrap it up with, you know, the, the Cowboys are going to have fans in the stands. Uh, obviously not a full group of people there, um, but what, what's the atmosphere like at Cowboys games? It, it, here at State Farm Stadium with the Cardinals, it's either zero fans or it's been a couple hundred, so there's no sort of home field advantage. Do the Cowboys have a little bit of one because they have fans, or is it not really affecting other offenses because they can't get as loud as it would be in a sellout? So... I don't think you get the true home field advantage in the sense of like, you know, the offense can't hear itself, make the calls and that type of stuff. I mean, the, there's 25,000 people in the building, but it's a building that can hold a hundred. So you're not, you're not dealing with the full decibel level. Right. But what I will say is, and I've, I've talked to players about this is maybe the weirdest thing about not having fans is it just sort of takes you out of the ebbs and flows of the game, you know? Like there's nobody cheering when you make a big play or there's nobody, um, you know, gassing you up when, when you get a stop or anything like that. And I will say like, you definitely notice that at AT&T Stadium is like the crowd is into it. They're following along, you know, they're cheering against the opponent. They're, they're making a lot of noise when, when you make a big play. And I think that just helps players get into the, the feel of the game, you know? So I don't think there's like much of an advantage in the sense of being loud, but I just think it helps players to have that emotional engagement with, with fans. Yeah, and it's fun to have fans there. And obviously on Monday night, it'll be a nice primetime game for, for both teams still competing for the playoffs. And David, thank you very much for helping us out on Team to Team. Anytime. Thanks for having me.